Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at working with images on web pages. So in this example I have my index page for the Devon Ann Photography website open and this is our gallery page. This is where we are going to have larger thumbnail images that the user will be able to tap on and then go to their respective gallery pages. But we are at the point where we do have our index page linked to a style sheet that is doing the, the background here and laying out the navigation section. And so we have our navigation set up to link to all of the other main pages in the website. So what we would like to do here is to have our images that the user will be able to tap on. So our client has given us images to work with. So let me show you what those look like. So I have my files in my screen organized according to the type of file that they are. So I have my CSS file, I have all of my HTML files, and then there are a bunch of images, and these are PNG files, which is short for Portable Network Graphics. So these are the images to be included right now on the home page or on the gallery page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this up so that as I'm working I can use the exact name of the file that I want to use for my image. So let me start off by just putting in an image tag. We did a simple image before for the logo. So I'm just going to start out with that IMG SRC equals. And the first one that goes on the page is the newborn. So I can see that there's a file here called newborns.png. And again, it's also good to have the alt tag for screen readers. So I'm going to say image of newborn baby. So let me save and I'm going to refresh in the browser. We should have our newborn image. Now this is a lot bigger than what I had anticipated. Um, we should have four images going across, so we'll have two rows of images. So this is definitely going to be too big. So let's find out some size information on here. Now on the, the Mac, if I right click or command click, if you don't have a mouse with a right button, and choose Get Info. On Windows, you would right click and go to Properties. And on the Properties window somewhere, it will tell you some information about your image. Now for this image, unfortunately, it doesn't give me details about height and width. It just gives me the size on the disk. So I want to open this up in the Preview window. And on my Mac, I can go to more information about it, and I can see that it's 350 pixels wide and 350 pixels high. So what I'd like to do is resize this image, and press all, I'll have to resize all of these so that they will fit on the screen better. So they're 350 by 350. So before I change anything about these images, I want to make a copy of them because I don't want to change my originals. So I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to say image originals and then I'm going to put copies of these into that folder. So now if I check my folder I can see that I have a copy in my originals folder so that if something happens to these I can always go back and get a copy of my original. So never change your original files. Always have a copy. Wouldn't look good to go back to the customer and say, can you give me a copy of your files again? I kind of messed them up. They won't have a lot of confidence in you. So some options for resizing your images. You can use Paint if you have Windows. Another would be Photoshop or other image editing program. So let me show you one that I use a lot and it's free. I'm going to open up my web browser and I'm going to go to a Google search and let's search for Shrink-O-Matic and the first result that pops up is Tokiwoki so you want to go to Tokiwoki Shrink-O-Matic and it's an 
Adobe Air program that lets us batch resize images, or you can just do one at a time. And here's a screenshot of what the program looks like. And basically, you set the size that you want. Like if you just want it to be, if you wanted to change all of the images so that they were all 800 pixels wide, then you would choose max width. Or if you wanted them all to be the same height, or if you wanted them all to be the same height and width, then you would choose both options and set those values. But if you change one or the other, then it will keep everything in proportion. Uh, rotation, if you wanted them turned. For auto rename, it'll automatically rename the images, so it will keep your original file and make a copy. If you use same as original, then be careful because it will overwrite the original image. But we made a copy of it, so we do have a backup in case we overwrote them. And you can also customize the name. I have this downloaded on my computer, and I'm going to open it up and demonstrate how to use this in order to resize those images. And our original image size was 350 pixels wide by 350. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this so that it is, we'll say it's 200, and I'm going to set it for 200 since it's a square image. If it wasn't a square image and I would want it to automatically resize it, then I would just leave one of them checked. I'm going to keep same as original just because I do have a backup copy of everything, but if I didn't, I could have it auto renamed. And output format, same as original. If I wanted to change it to a JPEG or to a GIF, or if it was a ping and I wanted to change it to a JPEG, I could change the format here. Now it says drop pics here, so what I'm going to do is open up my finder window where my files are, and I'm just going to click and drag my selected images here, and I can see the progress going down here, and so now it has adjusted the size of all of the images. So now if I come back here and let me refresh my page, we can see that now my image is smaller. So shrink o is great for especially batch changing a group of things. Now another note before you go in and resize things, again, if you have original image, you can always go back to a larger image. But if you've resized an image and made it smaller, it's never a good idea to take it the other way and try to stretch it out and make it bigger because it gets all pixelated because it's lost a lot of the pixel information when you've resized it down. So always keep the, the original version of the largest size image that you have. You could always go from large to small, but you can't always go from small to large. Okay, so that's it for shrink o for now. Now the other thing that it's always a good idea to do is when you're putting in your image, to also specify the height and the width of the image. And so now I know that the width is 200 and the height is 200. Now you can see that it displays it fine without telling it the height and the width. And the advantage of specifying this is that your web server sends to the browser the HTML page, which is all text. And then it sends the images and graphics and videos and sound that might go along with it after. So the first thing your browser gets is this text file. And it reads all the way through it from top to bottom. So when it gets up here and it gets to this style sheet, it grabs that style sheet information so that it knows how to lay out the rest of the page. When it's reading through here and it's reading your images, it's also making space for an image. So our logo, we didn't specify height and width. So it doesn't know what to expect, whether this image should be this small or whether it should be the whole width of the page. So it kind of leaves that up in the air until the, it actually gets the logo image and then it can place it on the page. If it knows the width and height ahead of time, then as it's laying out the text on here, it knows how much space to leave for when that image does finally get to the browser. 
so it can help speed up the layout and drawing of the page on the screen. You may have run into some instances where you know the page starts to load and you see some stuff and then all of a sudden it disappears and then redraws again. Part of that is because the height and width of the images were not specified and so it has to redraw the screen again once it gets the images to know where they should be laid out. Okay, so we have our first image in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy this because we have a whole series of them. And all I'll have to do is change the name of the image and the alt text because they're all going to be the same size. So this one is bellies. Okay, now I'm being careful to make sure that I get the exact file name and making it case sensitive because even though it may not be case sensitive on my computer now, once I load it up to the web server, the chances are it will be a case sensitive server. So let's just save this and see what it looks like. So we have our images for the first row and then I'm going to add the images for the second row. So again, I'm just going to paste this in four times and then change the file names and the alt tags for the second row. And then I'll come back. Okay, so I have added the ping images that go along with each of the options. So if I come back over here and I refresh my page, we have all of our images. Now let me just show you again what happens if you have a broken image, right? Something is in here wrong, like for headshots, the file has a dash in it, and if I forgot to put the dash in there, and I come back over here and I refresh, then we have a broken image. Another advantage, though, of the alt tag is we can see here image of the beautiful model is still displayed even though the image isn't showing. So if there is a broken image for some reason, the user will still be able to get an idea of what should have been there. And if somebody has images turned off, that is an option in your browser settings to turn images off, which would speed up the, the download of pages. Then they would be able to see these alt tags displayed where the images should have been. So you want to be careful to be exact with the file names and make sure that you are case sensitive and word sensitive as well. Now, if your page happens to look like this and you have your browser screen going out really wide, you'll, you're going to have images going straight across this way. So as a temporary fix, in order to get these to appear on two separate lines, what we're going to do is in your index page, we're going to put a line break in between the two lines. So weddings should start down on the next line. So right before the weddings image, I'm just going to put in a break tag, which is a BR for a line break. And that will cause the other four images to move down to the next line. Now in a future video, we will look at how to revise and set up this so that it will say a standard width. But for now, work with it as a smaller screen and you can put in the physical break so that these will appear on the next line below it. 